Great, so now we're gonna get the AI to bully me too. Thanks, I feel super happy. Oh no, come God. on, it's over the top, <laughs> no. No, knocking back whiskey, knocking back is like a warm, wow. <laughs> wow, even the AI thinks that I am insane. Is it okay to use the improvements, <laughs> what the chat gave to us? Oh, it's better not. What, what's going on? Oh. Oh, oh yes, he's amazing. He's heard about us. Hello, lovely. In this video, we're gonna show you how to use ChatGPT for IELTS speaking. I'm Maria. And my name is Rory. And we're here with ChatGPT to help prepare you for IELTS speaking and have a little bit of fun along the way. In this video, we're gonna help you understand some of the ways of how to use ChatGPT for your speaking preparation, okay? So how and what prompts to give to the chat so the chat gives you useful answers. Because very often if you write something incorrectly or you don't formulate the prompt accurately, the chat doesn't give you much. We have created a list of prompts. So a list of questions, a list of these sentences, a list of prompts for you to use so you can take these prompts and put it in the chat GPT to give you useful answers. The link is in the description. Go there, download the list and you can copy the questions, the prompts and paste it into the chat. So let's first of all talk about speaking partners. How can we use chat GPT as a speaking partner? We have our Telegram channel where you can find a speaking partner. But if you don't want a real person as a partner, you can use ChatGPT. How? The problem is that ChatGPT doesn't have a personality. So the first thing that you should do, you should give this personality to this artificial intelligence. Okay? How do we do this? You can copy paste our prompt. So copy paste our profile, the link is in the description. So here we are just uh, copy pasting the personality, the description into the chat. Pretend to be a 30 year old man called Emre. Always stay in character. So we ask ChatGPT to be this person and we give the details. Rory, could you just give us uh, the key information about our character? Sure thing. Uh, Emre is, well, it describes his personality. He's passionate and ambitious. And it also tells us about his likes. He's a big fan of cooking. So much so that he, well, he used to work with his parents in their restaurant, and now he's moved out. And he's forging ahead with his own restaurant. So he's super keen on cooking. He's 28 and he's from Turkey, which is also important because, well, again, your national background will inform your choices about what you talk about. Yeah, and the chat uh, says, uh, what does he say? He says, hello, my name is Emre Yilmaz. It's nice to meet you. How are you doing today? And we just type in the response. I'm a bit under the weather. What do you enjoy doing on the weekend? And you see ChatGPT answers uh, in a kind of a natural way. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. When I'm not working at the restaurant, I love spending time with my family, exploring new neighborhoods and of course cooking. Um, on the weekends, I like to experiment with new recipes and techniques in my own kitchen. I also enjoy playing traditional Turkish music on my saz and attending live music events. What about you? What do you like to do on the weekends? You see, dear listener, what do we like uh, doing on the weekends? And um, we go like, I love playing squash, drinking whiskey. Roy, what else do we like doing? I don't like drinking whiskey. I like drinking bourbon at the weekend. God. Roy, you're from Scotland, so whiskey, drinking whiskey and and listening to IELTS Speaking for Success podcasts. Have you heard of them? Dear listener, here you can ask any questions, right? Anything. Oh. Oh, oh, yes, he's amazing. He's heard about us. Yes, I have heard of IELTS Speaking for Success podcast. They're quite popular, especially among those who are preparing for the IELTS exam. It's great to hear that you enjoy playing squash and drinking whiskey. Those are both enjoyable activities. <laughs> have you been playing squash for long? And do you have a favorite type of whiskey? Let's answer, right, okay, so... Um, Let's make a mistake. I played squash for two years and it's fun. So we got a reply from him and he says, that's great, squash can be a really fun and challenging sport. I admire people who stay active and pursue their interests, whether it's through sports or other hobbies. Speaking of hobbies, 
Have you ever tried cooking before? As a chef, I'm always curious to know if people enjoy experimenting with new ingredients and recipes in their own kitchens. Do we experiment? I just started cooking recently, so I have no idea. Oh yes, I cook eggs in a freaking microwave. Can you imagine? I would like to point out that I haven't actually cooked my eggs in a microwave ever since people made fun of me for that, so... Oh, wow. Thank you, people. Thank you, everybody who made comments and who wrote to Rory, like, stop doing... <laughs> Thank you, everybody who bullied me on the internet. Okay, let's ask a Turkish chef. Do you think it's a good idea to cook eggs in a microwave? Great, so now we're going to get the AI to bully me too. Thanks, I feel super happy. Dilisa, if you don't know what we're talking about, we discussed this uh, fast food or food episode and Rory told us that he cooks eggs in a microwave. I know, I know, I know, it's horrible. So, and we started discussing <laughs> these things and people started writing to Rory like, Rory, come on, man, you don't do this thing. You cook eggs in a freaking frying pan. And Rory replied telling everybody to get a grip and work on their own things and stop bothering him. Rory, could you read out the answer? <laughs> Emery oh, says, really yeah, long. Rory's way of cooking is awesome. No, he doesn't say that. Well, while it's certainly possible to cook eggs in a microwave, it's not the ideal method of cooking them. Microwaving eggs can sometimes cause them to explode or become rubbery in texture. Plus, <laughs> when it comes to cooking eggs, there are so many delicious ways to prepare them, from scrambled to fried to poached and beyond. If you're interested in improving your cooking skills, I'd be happy to share some tips and techniques with you. Cooking can be a really fun and rewarding activity, and it's always great to experiment with new flavors and ingredients. Have you tried making any Turkish dishes before? Wow. Even the AI thinks that I am insane. Can we make any Turkish dishes with whiskey? This is, of course, a not very authentic conversation because I do not drink whiskey. I drink bourbon, like a normal human being. While Turkish cuisine doesn't typically include whiskey as an ingredient in its traditional recipes, it's always fun to experiment with new flavors and try new things in the kitchen. You could try incorporating whiskey into a marinade or sauce for grilled meals, or even use it to deglaze, <laughs> or even use it to deglaze a pan when making a savory sauce. One popular Turkish dish that features a delicious sauce is Iskander kebab which typically includes a tomato-based sauce with a touch of spicy pepper and tangy yogurt. While whiskey might not be a traditional ingredient in Iskander kebab, you can certainly try experimenting with different flavors and ingredients to create a unique variation of the dish. It would be very unique if it had whiskey in it, trust me. If you are from Turkey, could you please in the comments let us know, would you ever put any whiskey in any Turkish dish? If you are from Turkey, please accept our apologies for violating your cultural norms. It really wasn't our intention, but we're going with it now, so... So you see the idea, yeah? So we give the chat a personality and then we just chit chat about anything in the world. Let's ask him about his family. Tell me about your family. And he told us about his family. I come from a large and loving family in Istanbul. I'm the oldest of five siblings and I'm very close with all of them. My parents and grandparents also play a big role in my life. They instilled in me a love of Turkish culture and cuisine from a young age. And I'm grateful for all the wonderful memories we shared over the years. My mother is an excellent cook and has always been a source of inspiration for me. She taught me so much about the art of cooking, from the importance of using fresh ingredients to the value of patience and attention to detail. I'm also very close to my father, who is a retired carpenter and enjoys spending his free time playing backgammon and drinking tea. Overall, my family is a huge part of my life and I'm grateful for all the support and love they've given me over the years. Oh, it's nice. Now, because we wrote some answers to the chat GPT, we can ask the chat to correct our language. And the prompt could be, can you please go over my messages in the chat and correct my grammar? Maria made some mistakes. I, of course, would never make a mistake. So you should be very sp specific with your prompt. Again, all the prompts we are using, they are in our list and the link is in the description, okay? Emery says that he has some suggestions for us. Sure, I'd be happy to help. Here are some corrections to your messages. Number one, I'm a bit under the weather. What do you enjoy doing at the weekend? Could be, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. What do you enjoy doing on the weekends? Is it okay though? Like, is it a mistake? Like, I'm a bit under the weather or I'm feeling a bit under the weather? Mistake or, or just improvement? I suppose under the weather is just an, um, it's not an accurate description of what you are. It's more a description of your feeling, so he's making it more exact. What do you enjoy doing on the weekends is probably a reflection of the fact that ChatGPT has an American origin, because Americans say on the weekend, or as we say in Britain, at the weekends. Wow. Well, they're correct, though. ChatGPT is American. Nobody's perfect. 
Number two. Oh yes, I cook eggs in the freaking microwave. Can you imagine? Do you think it's a good idea to cook eggs in the microwave? Could be. Yes, I cook eggs in the microwave. Can you imagine? Do you think it's a good idea? Number three. Can I make any Turkish dishes with whiskey? Could be. Can I use whiskey to make any Turkish dishes? So, it's not a mistake, but it's a... So which one would be more natural? I guess it doesn't really matter, because I'm trying to think if anything changes. I would have said the original is more complex because it's got the word, the preposition with in it. But perhaps the complexity is the problem and he's simplifying it to make it clearer. Number four. I played squash for two years and it's fun. Could be. I played squash for two years and it was fun. Is the alternative answer. So, dear listener, see, the chat improves your language, uh, makes it a little bit more natural, but sometimes, you know, there are certain things like at the weekend is corrected, all the weekends, both options are possible, right? And can I make any Turkish dishes with whiskey? Can I use whiskey to make any Turkish dishes? Both options are also correct. You see, so you should be careful with that. Another thing to point out from before is you talked about playing squash and you're still playing squash now. However, ChatGPT talked about it like it was in the past. I played squash for two years and it was fun. But it really should be, I've been playing squash for two years and it is fun. Yeah. Yeah, let's go back to the question because the question was in the present perfect continuous. So, have you been playing squash for a long time? Like, I started in the past, I still play, and in the future I will be playing, right? And the chat gave us everything in the past. So, but the correct way is, I've been playing squash for two years, right? So, you can also ask um, the chat to do the following thing. Can you please go over my messages in this chat? and point out sentences where I could have used phrasal verbs. So we ask the chat to give us examples where I can use phrasal verbs, but I didn't use phrasal verbs, right? So kind of like improve my language and use phrasal verbs using the sentences that I wrote to you. So Rory, what does the chat say? Sure. Here are some sentences where you could have used phrasal verbs. Number one. What do you enjoy doing at the weekend? Could be. What do you like to get up to on the weekends? Number two. I love playing squash, drinking whiskey, and listening to IELTS Speaking for Success podcasts. Could be. I'm into playing squash, knocking back whiskey, and turning into and tuning into IELTS Speaking for Success podcasts. Oh no! Come God. on! It's <laughs> over the top. No. No, knocking back whiskey, knocking back is like a warm, wow. <laughs> I think maybe it depends on how you're saying it. If you say it in a very matter of fact way, then it's probably not going to be uh, very well received. Yeah, you see, not not really good. Mm -mm. I don't know, I quite liked it. I thought it was funny. Number three, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. Could be, I'm feeling a bit down physically. <laughs> maybe we're is just like okay? pushing it a little bit. Not really, no. I think feeling a bit down is like feeling sad, but um, mm. feeling under the weather is to do with feeling ill. So no, I don't think that that's a realistic one. However, um, it's, it is good for the first one. Number four. Can you imagine? Do you think it's a good idea? Could be. <laughs> can you wrap your head around it? Do you reckon it's a good idea? <laughs> wow, wow. So, uh, Roy, <laughs> what should we tell the students? So as a student, who is preparing for IELTS, is it okay to use the improvements <laughs> what the chat gave to us? Or it's better not? What? What's well, going on? I think can you wrap your head around it might be a little bit condescending. However, um, do you reckon it's a good idea? Is actually not so bad, do you reckon? People say that. Can you wrap your head? Can you wrap your head around it, Maria? If I said that to you in real life, you would take my head off. So you see, dear listener, some sentences that the chat has corrected do not sound natural and Rory is laughing his head off because it's just like you don't say oh, this right they might sound natural if you're a very direct person however um, it does come across as quite rude we cannot rely on certain improvements that the chat makes be very careful and if you use the chat to improve your English make sure you check it up somewhere else in the dictionary or I don't know write um a question to a forum, ask your friends, ask us. But seriously, 
uh, do not use the chat as the only source, as like one source to kind of improve your language because there might be some mistakes, yeah, and unnatural examples. The most important and effective way to improve your understanding of phrasal verbs will of course be to go to successwithiles.com forward slash pod courses. Come on, you know you want to do it and you're not surprised that I'm doing it here either because we are talking about phrasal verbs. Link is in the description. We can use uh, the chat to give us some ideas for speaking part one. So let's go with um, these questions. So speaking part one, and we ask the chat, can you answer the following IELTS speaking part one questions for me? And give three or four sentences for each answer. And we give him like three questions, okay? The chat doesn't have any personality. So now the chat is M rare. Remember, we gave the chat the personality. If you don't do this, the chat will say, oh, I am a chat, I am an artificial intelligence thing, I don't have a personality, so this thing. So to avoid this, we give the personality, this like Turkish Emre, and the chat now gives us the answers. So the first question is, do you think your home is clean? Oh, what a fun question. Um, who says their home's going to be filthy? Yes, I think my home is clean. I make sure to keep my home tidy by dusting, vacuuming and wiping down surfaces regularly. I think it's important to have a clean and organized living space for a comfortable and healthy living. Hmm, interesting. For a comfortable and healthy living. For a comfortable and healthy life, I think he means. Hmm, you see, so for a comfortable and healthy living. Oh yeah, oh, there are some errors, dear listener. The chat GPT thing makes some errors. So, question number two was, what kind of chores or housework do you usually do? I usually do a variety of housework, such as washing the dishes, doing laundry, cleaning the bathroom, and dusting. I believe in sharing the household chores with my family members to keep the house clean and organized. And also here, for example, if you don't know what dusting means, you can ask the chat, what uh, does dusting mean? At any point, if you're not sure about the word, just ask the chat. Rory, could you read out the answer? Dusting refers to the act of removing dust from surfaces using a cloth or a duster. It's a common household chore that involves wiping down surfaces such as tables, shelves and other furniture to remove accumulated dust and keep the house clean. And we need more examples. So give me an example using dusting in a sentence. So you should understand how to use the word in a sentence. So ask the chat to give you some example sentences, okay? Rory, could you read out the example? Here's an example sentence using dusting. I spent the morning dusting the living room and was surprised at how much dust had accumulated on the coffee table and bookshelves. And then we can ask him uh, some more technical questions about how to use dusting. Like, do I say do the dusting? Rory, what does the chat say? Yes, you can say do the dusting to refer to the activity of cleaning surfaces by removing dust with a cloth or a duster. For example, I need to do the dusting today because there's a lot of dust on the furniture. So when you don't know how, how to use the word, uh, it's a good idea to just ask, give me an example with this. Third answer to the third question, the question is, who usually does the housework in your home? In my home, everyone takes part in doing the housework. My parents, siblings and I have our own share of chores to do to keep the house clean. We rotate the tasks every week so that no one gets overburdened with work. I think it's a fair system that works well for us. Okay, is it a good answer? Is everything okay? Nothing well, strange? If we talk about it in the context of even general English, even if we don't think about IELTS, like saying the topic back to the person is not very natural. It would be like, it would be better to say like, uh, well, where I'm from or in my home, everybody takes part or everybody does something or everybody does it. It referring to what they've talked about previously. <laughs> Siblings, that's very formal for talking about just people you grew up with. If you don't, don't know this word, we can ask the chat. So is the word siblings formal or informal? IELTS speaking is informal and you can use informal words. A simple yes would have done. However, we, instead we get the word siblings is considered a formal term to refer to brothers and sisters collectively. It is the most commonly used formal term to describe siblings in a family context. Informally, people may use terms such as brothers and sisters, sibs or sibset, really. Um, but these are generally less formal than siblings, and I would argue used a lot less. Sibset? What? No, exactly. This is very strange. 
do, Rory, do you feel this machine talking to you now? You know, I feel this, you know, technical taste, like mm, it's kind of like artificial intelligence. <laughs> also, we can ask him something like uh, household chores. Uh, you can ask him to give you synonyms. What synonyms for household chores can I use? Rory, uh, could you um, read out the answers and tell us are they good synonyms for household chores or not really? Here are some synonyms for household chores that you can use. Domestic tasks, housework, cleaning duties, home maintenance, household duties, chores around the house, cleaning and tidying, domestic responsibilities, daily routine tasks, Daily routine <laughs> Domestic tab. responsibilities. Oh, dear listeners, some of the synonyms are not really good. So, Roy, tell us which ones are not good. Well, if we talk about household chores, cleaning duties. Duty is something that, uh, you know, you talk about in a workplace. I guess if you had very strict parents, then maybe they would treat it that way. Daily routine tasks. Uh, I don't think so. Tasks as part of my daily routine includes, would be the whole phrase, but then we just asked him for a list, so I don't know if that's fair. Robbie, do you think we can use the chat to give us uh, the answer to speaking part two instead of Rory's story? I took a recent IELTS speaking part two topic, okay? So we have our premium episodes and uh, where, where Rory tells his story and now we are asking the freaking chat gpt and remember that we gave the chat a personality so the chat is still emre from turkey so my prompt is can you answer the following ielts question your answer must last for about two minutes at a normal speaking speed and then the question describe a water sport you want to learn in the future uh, a water sport you should say what it is, what you need to do in this sport, why you want to learn this sport, and explain whether it is difficult or easy to learn this sport. You see, so this is a typical IELTS speaking part two question. And Rory, here we have the answer. One water sport I would love to learn in the future is scuba diving. Scuba diving is a type of underwater diving in which divers use self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, or scuba, to breathe. In short, to get started with scuba diving, one typically needs to take a certification course to, um, to learn the basic skills and safety procedures. The reason I want to learn scuba diving is because I'm fascinated by the underwater world and all the amazing marine life that exists there. Uh, I've also enjoyed swimming and being in the water, and I think scuba diving would allow me to experience a whole new level of immersion in a marine environment. I imagine that scuba diving might be a bit challenging to learn at first, as it involves mastering a variety of technical skills and safety procedures. However, I think that with proper training and practice, it could become quite easy and even enjoyable. I'm excited to learn about the prospect of scuba diving and being able to explore the depths of the ocean firsthand. And we have some topic-specific vocabulary. Generally, dear listener, it's fine, okay? We can also ask him something like for more ideas. So to generate more ideas, what other water sports can I talk about? Water skiing. Yeah, there you go, you see? So for brainstorming ideas, dear listener, that's great because it gives us like scuba diving, surfing, water skiing, wakeboarding. And then you can ask him, okay, what is wakeboarding, kite surfing, stand up, paddle boarding, or sup, that's my favorite one, canoeing, kayaking, sailing, windsurfing, rafting, white water rafting. So for generating ideas, that's great. Okay. What about speaking part three? So we write, can you answer the following speaking question, giving reasons and examples, give me one idea. What can factories do to reduce pollution? So, and now uh, the chat gives me only one idea. So, Rory, could you read it out? One idea for factories to reduce pollution is to implement stricter emissions control measures. By installing and maintaining effective air pollution control systems, factories can significantly reduce the release of harmful pollutants into the atmosphere. This can be achieved through the use of advanced technologies such as scrubbers, catalytic converters, and filters, which capture and treat pollutants before they are discharged. For example, a power plant can install flue gas de de desulfurization systems to remove sulfur dioxide emissions, leading to cleaner air and reduced environmental impact. That is a very 
lexically complex answer. That just means there's a lot of big words in there. And I would like to suggest that the phrase flue gas desulfurization system is not something that we could realistically expect somebody to talk about in an IELTS exam if uh, un unless they were an expert in this field. So there's a variety of grammatical structures and vocabulary that can be used here. However, I would steer clear of the more specialized terms that would only be used by an engineer in, um, I don't even know what that field would be called, um, in, in pollution reduction, I guess. So, dear listener, you see, so these are some of the ways of how you can use ChatGPT for IELTS. Be very careful. Do not trust everything that ChatGPT gives you. The first thing to remember is give the chat a personality. So IELTS speaking questions are personal. So first, give the chat a personality. Copy paste from our list. The link is in the description. Secondly, the prompt that you write in the chat should be very specific. Tell the chat how many sentences to write, what to do. Like it should be as specific as possible. Kind of give us one sentence or one idea. So be super specific and uh, make sure kind of maybe you change the prompt. Real teachers are better, but I'd say that uh, use ChatGPT to generate ideas, especially for tricky topics. For example, if the topic is agriculture, architecture, fashion, just uh, type it in. What are some of the popular opinions on fashion? So what are the top three fashionable trends in clothes, for example? What are the opinions? Like what is more than architecture? You see, so for generating ideas and also for generating topic specific vocabulary, the chat is great. And remember to ask why, because you'll have to explain why in your exam. Thank you so much for listening, for watching. Please write in the comments, uh, do you like the chat? Did you like any of the ideas? How do you use it, if you use it, right? And for your IELTS preparation, so let us know. It's uh, We're really interested in knowing what you do with the chat and share your prompts that you put in there for everyone uh, kind of to know and for us to know Thank you so much. Love and hugs. Bye. Bye.